Hi guys, and welcome back to Cast Milk Youth Complex's very own weekly podcast, The Milk Ground. We put this podcast out every week, talking about different topics, and it goes up on our YouTube channel, which you're probably on just now. So if you can like the video, subscribe, check out our other podcasts, and ring the bell for notifications. Uh, you can also get us on other social medias, which Chris, who is back this week, good to have you back, Chris. Why, is hello. Been on through our social medias for us. I still need to read off a list too, Lee, so I don't feel too bad about it. Uh, well, I've done it last week and I, 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 know. Felt, I felt like I'd done no bad. So I, 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 think, I think you were very natural. You were probably right. a hell of a lot more natural than me. <laughs> you might be in for this job, Lee. You never oh, I don't know. know. I don't know about that. <laughs> However, we are uh, on Facebook. It's Kelly Youth Complex Staff. On Twitter, it's Youth Complex CYC. And Instagram, it's Youth under slash Complex. TikTok, it's Kelly Youth Complex, and you can also email us at CYC, uh, CYC Youth Team at gmail.com. Brilliant, happy days. So, as I said, um, we, we've got lots of different podcasts out now. This is our sixth podcast, I believe. Um, so, if you can check out the other videos, that would be great. Um, we just talk about lots of different topics, and you guys can actually send us in some topics on our social medias. Um, so, we've had music in the past, we've had mental health and last week we had a different co-host on we had tom on because you've been quite busy this week Chris. I have, yes mm. as you can see from my alternative background this isn't one of those new virtual backgrounds that you can get for zoom no. um this is an entirely new house that i've moved into really? um so yeah it's been a very tiring and quick uh, week or two yeah. weeks probably since since we recorded for me yeah. anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so just getting just get the internet turned on a few days or yesterday. I'm losing track of days, but <laughs> so hopefully it'll hold out for this because uh, it's a new location and stuff. Right. Like so, okay. yeah. Well, it's probably hard enough during lockdown to think what day it is, but it must be even harder for you being that busy and just trying to get your head around things and just trying to do normal things, you know, like yeah. we've got no cupboards, so we're trying, should we buy cupboards or should we just hold off till the shops are properly open? Uh, so we're living out of suitcases right now, so right. That's, it's like being in holiday. <laughs> Aye. So we had Tom on last week um, and we spoke about some sports, spoke about what's going on in English football and Scottish football and American sports, because he likes American sports, and he joined in in a section that we'll get to later. Um, mm -hmm. And he was watching some Life on Mars, and um, you had something to say. I to, well, yeah, I have to correct. So one of the things, obviously, my uh, what's on my telly recommendations has been very kind of sci-fi, kind of fantasy orientated stuff. So you're kind of getting a demographic for what I'm really into. So yeah. you've mentioned uh, the the main actor in Life on Mars, John Sim if he was in Doctor Who or not, and I think at the time he's dismissed it. I'm going to correct you on that, guys. John Sim was a very prominent character in Doctor Who. He was the arch nemesis of the David Tennant Doctor. He was the master. Yeah. And, he, and he featured in and out of the show over a couple of seasons. Uh, and he was, a, he was a very good addition to the show, definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're talking about life on Mars as well, um, they also did a spin-off show uh, called Ashes to Ashes. So right. two names are very famous, uh, Bowie, um, Bowie songs. And yeah. both songs that the shows were named after reflected the time period mm -hmm. in, in which these shows were set. So uh, Ashes to Ashes uh, was a different person. That, it was also a cop that went into a coma. It was a female this time. Okay. And uh, it was set in the kind of 80s. But... Uh, the kind of same character, uh, main character, right. um, who was like the kind of boss of the John Sim character, uh, was also featured in um, Ashes to Ashes as well. And actually, in some ways, I would say Ashes to Ashes was better than Life right. Mars. Controversially, I don't know if that's controversial or not, but yeah, both really good shows. So a very good recommendation from last. Well, week. hopefully Tom listens or watches to this and realizes that I was right last week. Um, yep, you're yeah. right. You can buy me a Coke for that, so you can. Yes. Um, yes. Or an Iron Brew or something. Mm -hmm. um, so we've heard what you've been up to this week. Oh, <laughs> you've already got one. Did they buy you that for getting it right? That was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've been really busy this week, obviously, just yeah. dealing with things like Mega busy. house and that. Um, for me, 
I got a bike the other day, so I'm quite excited about that. Good for you. It took us about six weeks to source one on Halfords because they were getting sold out all the time, and then another three weeks for it to get delivered to store, and then another week for it to be built in store. So mm -hmm. finally got it, so that's me, I'm out. And then the first day I got it, it started pouring down. So <laughs> it wasn't nice coming oh, back dear. up from Halfords and rather going back up to Castle. Oh, all did you hill. go right back up the hill? Yep. Oh, right. my God. You're a hero. A lot, a lot of it was spent walking beside the bike <laughs> and just pushing it up. Um, but I, apart from that, just... Um, been back in, back in at work this week in the school, mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of links in nicely to our next section, which is the nice news section. Mm -hmm. So every week, because of what's going on, it's not very nice when you turn on the news channel, you see things about COVID and death and things like that, and mm -hmm. um, lockdown, and um, so people are getting a wee bit fed up, so we try and bring a, a nice news story, and I think what we'll do this week is bring our nice news story to you guys. And our nice news story is that the youthy is back, not open, but we've got we've got something going on, don't we? We've got um, what's it called again? We've called it lunch with a munch, coming lunch with a munch. I think it's called something like that. Um, and it means you can you you guys can come along to the complex and with your friends. Obviously, we're still doing social distancing, still doing all the, the um, sterilising the tables, we're still cleaning hands. Um, but you can uh, sit for a slot of 20 minutes um, and that's between two and four every Tuesday and Thursday uh, and you get a free lunch with that and on the poster as well it says you get free banter but I don't know what staff is giving that out. Um, maybe we've got some... Some, some other of that might be past its sell by date. <laughs> 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 we must have new staff or something because I don't know where the banter is going from. I know, I know. Um, and I see they've got a nice wee outdoor gazebo set up there yep. as well. So it looks great. Aye, so that's even that's obviously adhering to social distance to try to keep everything outside. So yeah, it's going to weatherproof it. So if you guys want involved in that, if you'd like to come up to the youth complex on a Tuesday or Thursday between two and four, all you need to do is go on our social medias, and you scan the barcode that's on um, the poster for this um, from the Youthy Cafe, uh, and that will take you through to a booking. Um, system where you book a slot with your friends um, and you come up and get a lunch. You will have to leave at the end of your 20 minutes obviously just to stick by the rules um, but it'll be good to just to see your faces and get to speak to you face to face instead of through social media. Um, if you're struggling with getting on the barcode and trying to book up online just give us a message on our social media or our email or give us a phone and we can try and book you in with your pals but um, aye, that's a nice news story out of our community, out of our, our organisation. It's just, I think it's good for young people and also good for staff to to get back doing face to face youth work and mm -hmm. things like that. Having the young people around the building, um, not in the building just now, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. um, if the weather is nice, it's good to just sit out and and see your faces. In a free munch, you can't you can't say better than a free munch exactly. in the cafe. I mean, I wonder if they're making that fantastic cold slaw. It's the only cold slaw I eat in the world. Right. Is that stuff? Uh, we'll put a request in. I then. know there's a certain staff member uh, within our team that has never eaten cold slaw. Uh, he's one of our session workers. He's quite kind of close in age range to yourself. Well, I've never eaten cold slaw either. You've never eaten no, cold slaw. No. I'm fussing. Oh my with god. With well, if you're ever if you're ever going to take that dive into the the, the deep waters right. of cold slaw, then you could do a lot worse than try the youth complex cafe cold slaw. Okay. So that's prob and you probably wouldn't need to try another cold slaw after that, to be honest. Exactly. Are you going to name the other worker so that uh, I'm not the only weirdo? It, it it rhymes with spiky. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Dean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? How did you know? <laughs> that um, that actually fits in perfectly as well um, about trying new foods into our next section, which is the big fans' favourite, as I've said every week. Um, we're getting a lot of feedback on this section. People are loving it. People are chatting about it. I'm hoping some people will want to come on and even give their what's on my telly and what's in my belly. Um, yeah, definitely. Because I'm, I'm finishing it up and then speaking to other staff members or speaking to people in the house and they soon oh, you could say this for the next time, or you could, or I've been watching this, so it's like a wee conversation starter. Um, so you're just back, so do you, want to, do you want to go first this week? Since you're just okay, back? no problem. So cool. do you want to go 
go with we have to go with the parlance of the section itself. So I suppose we have to start with what's on my telly. Yeah, what is on your telly, Chris? There hasn't been a great um, chance to watch much telly this no. week. No, probably imagine. But one of the kind of gaps in the kind of uh, schedule that we have uh, is at uh, dinner time. And in order to do, I've, I've mentioned before, I've got two fairly young kids there, so we have to kind of put something on that everyone would kind of enjoy, yep. I suppose. And so this week, what's on my telly is the Back to the Future trilogy. <sighs> yes, now you're talking. So I didn't know whether this would appeal to you or not, Lee. I, I don't know if One it One of was, my favourite movies is well, the first the, movie. The, well, great stuff, because I thought it might just be a bit, because it, it was released in 1985. Yeah. Set in 1985, the plot line. So... Uh, I thought, well, I don't know if I'm a chance in my arm with Leo on this one, but nice. yeah, the Back to the Future trilogy, we kind of, over maybe about a week or two, we've kind of generally worked our way through. We've watched maybe half a movie a night yeah. at, at dinner time. Uh, it was, as I said, set in 1985. Uh, the main character has to go back, ha- gets, um, has to go back to 1955 in a time machine. Uh, uh, basically has a it sounds really bad when you say it out loud this plot line but his mother I starts see. his mother starts to have feelings for him he meets his parents who yep. have not got together and his mother starts to have feelings for him because uh, he's the old conquering hero against the bully biff um and it starts to erase him from that timeline because uh, then his mother and father don't get together. So that's generally where it kind of starts. Uh, I will not, I've will i kind of given a lot away there, but I, I feel it's yeah. not one that you can spoil. It's been out that long. No, um, no I don't think you've given away too much there. I don't think uh, so. The character Biff uh, is apparently based on a very uh, current uh, US president. Right, okay. So uh, it's that kind of bully boy character, the yep. kind of classic kind of character. Um, it was directed by a guy called Robert Zemeckis, who also did Forrest Gump, mm-hmm. uh, to name a few. I think his heyday was really in the 80s. He did Romance in the Stone and stuff like that. But the funny thing about the Back to the Future trilogy is that when... Um, I'm trying to give away stuff, but like in the second film, he actually goes to, rather than goes to the past, he goes to the future. He goes to 2005, which... 2015, uh, yeah. Was it 2015 or yeah. is it 2000? 2015, sorry, yeah. I do, which is five years ago. And it's quite uh, funny to see uh, what they thought the future might be in 1985. They had like crazy hoverboards. Some of it's actually quite on point, but... Yeah. Uh, some of it's way off, you know. Aye. Yeah, but Aye. a good fun family <laughs> uh, trilogy there. Um, and then some of our young people have probably watched the show Rick and Morty, which is loosely mm-hmm. based on Doc and Marty. From oh, is it? I've never mm-hmm. seen Rick and Morty. I've heard lots of people talk about it, and can't believe that I've not watched it. So I really should get on that, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. Um, and one year, I think two years ago. My girlfriend and I dressed up as Doc and Marty, so... Nice. Uh, big fans. We, I was need pi- we need picture evidence of this, Lee. I'll, I'll put it up. I'll put it up on our um, on our social medias near Halloween. We'll get some yeah. of the big Halloween costumes from the past of staff and young people, and I'll put that one up. Um, aye, that's a great recommendation. I'm really happy with it. Good. I'll really have to watch it again. <laughs> so, Lee, what's on your telly? What's on my telly? Well, this week, um, my mum gave me the logins to her Disney Plus and me and Brooke didn't realise how much Disney we watched when we were younger and we loved it. So one of the first ones I wanted to go to was a live action movie called Cheaper by the Dozen. Okay. And this is another family movie that's just feel good and daft, really silly, like Steve Martin with slapstick Steve Martin, comedy. Yeah, I've seen it. I yeah. have seen it. It's it's stupid, but it's just an easy watch and makes you feel happy, makes you feel sad, and it's just I'd recommend that. And then we watch the second one as well, and that's probably even sillier. It's got Eugene Levy from the American Pie movies in it, mm-hmm. and there's a kind of rivalry between their families, um, and it goes back to that kind of like eighties National Lampoon kind of dad always gets everything wrong, and 
spoils mm-hmm. things for the kids and the kids just get fed up a dad but then it all becomes happy again at well, I don't know what happens at the end. I won't spoil that, but um, they're pretty predictable, the movies, but really enjoyable. And then, well, I, I better just recommend the third one that we watched uh, last night, um, Chicken Little. don't know if you've seen that one. No, I've not seen that one. No? I can't remember when that was out, maybe like 2004, 2005, but it wasn't a massive Disney movie. But um, it's about this little chicken called Chicken Little. And um, that's like in a sci-fi one, so... That may be one that you and your kids can sit and watch because if you're into sci-fi and then the kids are into Disney, then I'd recommend that. But I, Disney Plus, as Maya mentioned a couple of weeks ago, she's been watching that. Um, she mentioned that in her interview and I thought, right, I've got to give this a go and see what it's all about. So, mm-hmm. Well, I, 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 you mentioned Cheaper by the Dozen. That was also one of, we've been kind of working our way through the Disney Plus catalogue really? for those kind of films. Um uh, Funnily enough, the Back to the Future trilogy, it was on Amazon. I think it just recently came on Amazon. But uh, yeah, there's lots of good films like that that are just kind of all over family kind of entertainment. So we watched the National Treasure stuff with Nick Cage. I really enjoyed Uh, that. Nick Cage for president, I just have to say. (laughs) He's one of my favourites of all time, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, the National Treasure stuff's good. It's a bit like Tomb Raider light, you know. Yeah, I get you. It's, it's um, some good stuff. So, next part is, what's in your belly, Chris? Now, I thought about this long and hard. So, there's, there's as I've been saying, there's not really been much of a kind of opportunity to watch anything or make anything from scratch. So, I haven't really made anything. But what has been mostly in my belly this week, and it's a, a subject that I, I feel quite strongly about, it's pizza. Aye. You know, just pizza is 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 for me. It's there's 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 a lot of uh, pizza out there, but most of it is trash. Right, it, sorry, so, so, so but yeah, this is a conversation yeah. that I was going to bring next week because I was going to have a pizza and then I was going to ask you to rank different pizzas. Wow. Aye. So oh. that's so okay. so that's for for the future. <laughs> So well, we can, no, we can go for it tonight. That's fine. I'm happy. Oh no, I'm, I I I need to go because I'm 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 on this. So right. pizza for me is is there's a lot of trash out there, but then there are some great pizzas as well. For me, there's a kind of it was kind of like almost like four styles of pizza. So for there's the Neapolitan pizza, um, which is kind of like if anyone's been to Pisano in town, that's that's a very much a Neapolitan style pizza. There's a, a New York kind of style pizza, which I would say for, it's a really bad example and I'm not endorsing uh, them as a mainstream, but say like a, a Domino's pizza is, is kind of like a New York style pizza. Mm-hmm. I hate Domino's, I think it's trash myself, but like it, just to give you the kind of idea of that type of pizza, there's a kind of halfway between the Neapolitan and um, the New York pizza, and it's a Roman pizza. So it's basically based in, in Rome. Um, mm. And the other one, which I don't think there's anyone in Glasgow that does it. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the Chicago pizza pie is another style of pizza. So you can get them in the shop, Chicago town, but apparently Throw it in getting, a, getting a proper Chicago, and I've never had the the experience of getting a proper Chicago, but it's a very deep set pizza. It's got lots of sauce in it. It's lots of cheese. Chuck it in the bin. Yeah. What you chuck the whole thing in the bin, the whole idea of it. The whole, I uh, chuck, chuck Chicago, the city in the bin for inventing that pizza. <laughs> have you tried, have you tried any of the actual. No, I've only Virginian tried. Virginian stuff, the just the Chicago, Chicago town. So I think, apparently we've, I think we've got a kind of skewed, kind of opinion on it because yeah. really it's that kind of uh, frozen kind of pizza style but apparently a Chicago I've never tried it but if you go to Chicago you have the Whopper Chicago pizza pie it's something to behold so I've been to an Italian in Chicago as well and I didn't have a pizza <laughs> <laughs> and Alfred, uh, chicken Alfredo or something like that well there you go so I thought it would be good to because obviously pizza is I'm going to recommend a few places Okay. That, I've, that I've tried in, in the kind of local area and some that I've heard that have just opened that I've heard good things about. So 
takeaway wise uh, for a really authentic wood fired pizza that I would say is probably more like a New York style pizza is CC's wood fired pizza in Clarkson Road. They're on yeah. Just Eat, I believe, and all the kind of major online things. It's whether you're in the catchment area or not. Then below that is Tony's Pizzeria. It's in Fennec Road in Gifnock, also on Just Eat, I believe. They also have their own website. Uh, one that's not opened right now and is the classic New York style pizza is Errol's Hot Pizza in Victoria Road. It's basically a sit-in restaurant. It's tiny. It's some of the best pizza I've tried in a long time. Uh, you can't get it as a takeaway, so it's purely a sit-in. And I believe that's why they haven't opened yet. Um, and a recent addition to the South Side is Knoto. And it's, um, it's the former Barbarossa near Cathcart train station. Uh, yeah. I believe, I've not been down, it's round about that area. It's in Margarita Buildings, which is right next to Cathcart train station. They claim to do an authentic Roman style pizza, which is something that I've yet to try. Um, and another really special mention to a, different, a completely different type, and I would just class it as pizza because it's basically all the components, is a Lamuchin Turkish pizza. Have you ever yeah. tried that? No, I've never tried that. I've been to Turkey a few times. So it's a tried. really thin based pizza and it's kind of got a kind of mince topping on it. Um, and it's got like different kind of spices. And then you can, in Glasgow, there's a place called Istanbul and Paisley Road West, which do some of the finest kebabs in Glasgow, but also do Lamuchin. Um, and you can try it in there. And you can do put any kind of pizza toppings on it, like cheese, the pepperoni, or even if you are really feeling quite saucy, a, don a bit of donor meat or kebab meats and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's a completely different type of experience from all of the other kind of normal pizzas. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I keep going on about this, but pizza is an important thing to me. You oh, know? So um, I think it's also worth mentioning uh, pizzas that you can just buy in the shops. Uh, well, this is one that's pretty high up in my list. Okay. A shop that do great pizzas for okay. places. Would you like me to go first, or do you want I to? Break it away? So I've 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 narrowed it down to a top three. Okay. Right. So um, coming in third is the Cosmo Pizza, the Haggis Pizza. It's a Haggis Pizza. It's really thin based. It's probably. A New York style. I'm definitely into the kind of New York style pizza. Mm -hmm. um, you can get them, I think, in Sainsbury's, I believe. Um, I've seen them in Morrison's before. Um, maybe the really big supermarkets, you'll get something like that. Um, yeah. And second place for me is Pizza Express. Uh, okay. So the shop bought pizzas, I'm not a big fan of going to the restaurant, but yeah. I do like their shop bought pizzas. I think they're quite good. Um, mm -hmm. They, they tick all the boxes. And top of my list, and it was a no-brainer for me, is the Asda over-the-counter pizzas. They are just... It's number one. For me, for me the best. The Asda, I remember when they started doing that, and it was probably way back in the 90s, so they've been yeah. doing it for a hell of a long time. And I think the bases could be better, but like it makes up for it with the sauce and the toppings yeah. and the freshness of them, basically. Yeah, that'd be right. I, well, that's what I was going to say. Asda, Asda is top for a yeah. shop pizza. Um, another few honourable mentions is um, ZZ's. Have you, have you tried ZZ's? Uh, one, in Exchange, one in Prince's. Yeah, I I don't think I've had pizza out of there. I've not tried ZZ's they, pizza They before. do like a classic pizza and then they do a thing called a Rustica pizza. Mm -hmm. And it, the dough is so thin and crispy, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and it's shaped like mm -hmm. it's not like a circular pizza, it's quite long, so it is. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like classic Italian, not a lot of sauce on it, mm -hmm. um, and then your toppings on it. Like they kind of minimize the toppings as well, but so it's more about like the crisp of the bread and all that. But yeah. I, honorable mention for that. Um, I'm not a fan of Pizza Hut, to be honest. No. Done no. pizza a couple of times and it's just too thick, too. I don't know, it's no, deep pan. For I think. Me. It was the original kind of mainstay, kind of like mainstream takeaway for a while. And yeah, um, but no, if I had to choose between Pizza Hut and Domino's, I would choose Pizza Hut. I really right. dislike Domino's, but okay. 
and of those kind of main kind of three, um, I would say Papa John's is above oh, them yes. all. In my personal opinion, that's based on their tomato sauce is the best out of them all. Right. Uh, so in a pinch, I would I would order a Papa John's if I really needed to. Okay. Uh, and then there's another place that I mentioned in another podcast called Oro on Kilmarnock Road. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I've heard good things about Oro. I've never uh, had I haven't tried. ordered the pizza before, but I've tried the pizza before <laughs> um, <laughs> off someone else's plate. Uh, Brooke always orders a pizza in there and mm-hmm. you can never finish it, so I get some of it after I've eaten my, my Glasgow-style carbonara that we were speaking about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but I am glad you. I think we should maybe do a full podcast on pizzas one day. I, I think I could easily do a full podcast on pizza. I think we've already done a full podcast yeah, on yeah, pizza, yeah, practically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Lee, what's in your belly this week? Uh, in my belly is something else which has got a kind of whole range and maybe a, an argument over it as well. And um, I've just finished one there for my dinner, and it's steak. So I had steak for my dinner tonight. And the reason I'm saying there's an argument for it is because there's so many different cuts of meat and there's so many different ways to cook it. So people say that I'm horrible because I eat my steak rare. I love it. Pink in the middle. Like stuff coming out of it now that so that you can dip your chips in afterwards. It's great, isn't it? I'd completely agree with you on that. I think if it's not... If it's not rare, or at very least medium rare, then you don't deserve to eat that steak. You've ruined it. You've ruined, You've ruined it. You've ruined it. You've ruined it. what I say. And so many, like, my girlfriend, my my mum, they, they all enjoy it well done. And I'm just like, oh, no. That's, it's finished. <laughs> yeah. But my Promoted. mates will slag me for eating it rare and say, oh, it's still mooing on the plate. So um, tonight I had a nice sirloin. Um, I leave mine out of the fridge for a couple hours beforehand just to get yep. the temperature, um, season it beforehand, um, rub some salt, pepper, things like that in there, put some oil through it as well, massage that into it and just leave it to sit and then get your pan really hot um, and then probably looking at it. It's, it's really hard to cook your own steak. Mm-hmm. That That's the only thing, to get it to like a restaurant standard. So uh, there's a, a thing that I've heard uh, and I believe it is... Uh, so if you tap your forehead, that's well done. Right. If you tap your chin, I believe that's medium, and you tap your cheek, that's rare. Right, okay. I've seen the one that people do this, so that that's rare. And then if you touch your pinky, that's well done. If you... Yeah, yeah, it's, similar, it's a similar kind of uh, process. Mm. I, it's probably some... That'd probably be better, in fact. That sounds a bit better, because... Um, I, I just I love it just steak and chips that's all I have with when I'm having a steak even if I'm out for yeah. dinner having a steak it's just steak and chips on the plate because you don't need to spoil it with anything else I, I like a nice sauce as well so yeah, peppercorn or uh, something. I like, well I like a peppercorn but my, ulti- my actual ultimate favorite sauce and you don't get it in many places is a Diane sauce right. it's a it's like a mushroom brandy cream sauce that's um, um, Pretty popular down south and like if you go on holiday and all that as well, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you look up the Gordon Ramsay Steak Diane recipe, it's it's amazing. I use it regularly right. um, okay. and it's highly impressive for our children because you get to put a bit of brandy in and set it on fire. Right. So right. so they love watching me set the kitchen on fire with yeah, that. Experiment. So right. yeah, no, I'm, oh, with, I'm completely with you on that one, Lee. But it's some things for our viewers or uh, listeners to argue about as well with us if they're going to complain that we're cooking our steaks wrong or eating the wrong pizzas. So Yeah, well, I, and just in review, just to the last bit about pizza, I do promise this. I didn't mention also, if you want to make your own pizza, I've tried for years and years to kind of get the best kind of recipe out there. And the best one that I've ever tried is the Jamie Oliver pizza dough recipe. It uses double zero flour. Double zero flour is the flour you use to make pasta. It's a really finest grade flour. You can get it in most of the big supermarkets. And it's 90% that and 10% uh, semolina flour. And it, that semolina flour gives it a nice crunch. But if you look up that recipe on Google, it's it's 
I've tried them all, and that is the best. It comes out brilliant. It's just, it's a large commitment because it takes roughly three or four hours to prepare it, to yeah. let things rise and yeah. move them and all that sort of stuff. So it is a large time commitment, but I think I'll take that very, very much worth it. Yep, we'll definitely take that recommendation up. Mm-hmm. So that's that section finished. That was a long one, that one. That was a <laughs> steak debates. Um, so what this week is all about is education. So um, education's been weird, obviously, recently because of COVID-19, the coronavirus. Um, people didn't get to finish their, their school year the way that they wanted to. Um, and not everyone is 100% sure of what is going to be happening when we go back in August. Um, so schools have been off since March, I believe that we closed. It was middle March, I think, um, yeah. 16, 17, something like that, um, or the week later. Um, and the good thing is that schools were still putting in a bit of effort and teachers were getting in touch with you young people just to try and get you to do a wee bit of work so that you're still learning through this because it is hard when you've got that much time off. I remember being at school and going through the summer holidays and when you go back in August and you try and write your name on a jot and you're like, I haven't held a pen in <laughs> six weeks. Well, this is such a weird feeling, but um, I think it's good that the schools um, were, were given some support throughout all this, mm-hmm. um, whether that be academically or with, with other things that young people or families might have needed. Um, so, as I say, they might be quite different when we go back as well, Chris. Um, it's very much looking that way, isn't it? I mean, I think, I think, with greatest of respect to everyone concerned, teachers and all, and everyth- everything that are involved in the planning, is that it's a constantly evolving situation. So there's only there's only so much you can plan for that. So I believe what schools are doing, they're kind of planning for the what what would be like if we had to go back to school tomorrow. So they're yeah. putting those measures in place. I believe. Yeah. Um, John Swinney did come out last week in the Scottish Government and he says that if things, so he was, was very clever with his word and I thought, he said, if things get more normalised, if lockdowns loosened a bit, if the rate, the death rate goes down the way we want it to, schools will be back to normal in August. Mm-hmm. Now, if you guys have listened to that as young people or as parents and thought, oh, I don't know, if they're ready to go back or is that definitely going to be the way they haven't confirmed that so don't worry about it everyone is still on the basis that when we go back it will be the kind of split um for primaries it will be split into two days i believe yeah, be going that's on. exactly what's happened because that's what i've been notified yeah so it's two days a week um, um and then for secondary schools well the ones that i know of cast mckay school st margaret mary's secondary um, there will be half days, but five days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're either in the morning or the sec- uh, the afternoon, depending on if you're lower school or senior school. Um, my girlfriend's just qualified in being a primary teacher. So, <laughs> oh my god, that's this is the what a year to that for that to happen. Eh? Um, but she's been in her school and they're very supportive, and she's been down and she the the way that. She's given me information is that they're still on the two days a week until anything changes, and she's been planning for things like that. Um, the only struggle is that people are planning for that, and then it might all change come August. But um, it's just something that we've got to go with <laughs> because no one knows what to do right now with COVID 19 going on, and it's a first for everyone. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's. I know hard. It's, it's hard. It's, it, and it's hard to kind of. Like quantify where we would be come August, but rest assured that um, the people are there. They're working their butts off to to make it the best possible situation for everyone concerned, the safest situation for everyone as well. Yeah, I think that's one of the main points. Like you said, they're making it safe. Um, so if if parents are worried or anything, keep checking their social medias as well because we are sharing the information all the time. If parents of primary seven pupils who are just coming up to high school, we do have a primary seven page that you guys can go on on Facebook, and that's um, always got information updated on it. And even if you just want to give us a message, if you're worried about things, we do have staff who work in the local high schools, 
in Castmont High School and St Margaret Mary, so I'm one of those staff. Uh, I work up at Castmont High School. You do as well, Chris. You you work in there, yeah. Um, in the reflection room, um, and we've also got other home link workers in Castmont High School and a DYW worker called Kirsty, which is developing the young workforce. Um, and she'll help you with things like work experience once you get further up the school. Um, also down at St Margaret Mary's, if we've got any listeners or viewers from that school, um, we have Michael and Linda from Castmont Youth Complex. So Michael's from the Streetwise team and Linda's from the Youth Stress Centre and they're there um, to help you out. And what's quite good just now is as well, Chris, we've been asked by the school to come in once a week, all of the people okay. that have been mentioned there. Um, so me, myself, Kelly and Kirsty were in Castmont High School this week and um, we're just trying to give support to people that might need it throughout the summer holidays and um, people that are worried, people that have got questions or queries. Um, just send us a message, honestly. We're, so we're, is that all uh, kind of remote? So it's um, send a message. It's not like a drop-in service or anything like that. It's, no, there's no drop-in. Nah. It's send a message or a phone call. Mm-hmm. Um, we're available on a Wednesday at Castmont High School. It's different for St Margaret Mary's, um, but we'll be able to get that information out to you guys as well on social media mm-hmm. when uh, Michael and Linda are available. Um, but even that is when we're available. If you can't contact us at that time, I'm sure if you contact us on a Tuesday or Thursday when there's other people, they will pass it on to the guys that are in the school. Um, or even if you want to, if it's just something that comes to your mind, it doesn't have to be that day, contact the youth complex directly and a lot of our staff are based in school as we've mentioned we may be able to answer that question and if we can't answer that question then we'll certainly get in contact with somebody that uh, can answer the question for you yep definitely um it was good it was good to be back in school this week um we created a wee virtual tour at castmoke high school this week so we've put that up on our um that should be up by the time this is up as well, so uh, um, a virtual tour of, of Castle Kai, I believe, uh, and will hopefully feature St Margaret Mary's in the future as well. Yeah, that would be good. If young people haven't managed to go on their visit, haven't seen what high school is like, even if you're not going to Castle High School, you should give it a wee watch just to see where things might be situated, what kind of classes there might be, um, what different subjects you might be going into, things like that. Um, it might be good just to check that out. But people that are going to Castmont High School this year, give it a look because once you go up in August, you might think, oh, where am I going? Do I go to the office? How do I get to this class? Um, where's the social area? Things like that. So it's a quick wee video. It's about four and a half minutes. So give that a watch as well. Um, and as Chris says, we'll try and get one done in the future for St Margaret Mary's. Um, we did record another video this week um, that hopefully we're going to put in to our podcast right now. It's an interview yep. with um, our colleague Kelly, who is the other home link worker at Castmont High School, um, and of you this week, just to find out a bit about what she does and how she can help you up at Castmont High School. Hi Kelly, thanks for coming along to be interviewed today. Uh, could you just introduce yourself please? Hi everybody, my name's Kelly and I am a youth worker at Castle Milk Youth Complex, but I'm also home link worker in Castmont High School. So what is your role at Castlemont High School? So in Castlemont High School, my whole my role is home link worker, but the young people who are at Castlemont High would know me as the youth worker at Castlemont High. So my job in Castlemont High is to support young people with anything and everything that happens in the school day. So it could be anything from helping out with people who have maybe um, spilt just in their shirt in the morning or it could be they've had a wee fight with their pals on snapchat so we need to do a wee bit of restorative chatting between a group of pals or it could be something a bit more serious where there's maybe issues going on at home and people just want to talk through um, some issues. Brilliant. Uh, where and when can we find you? So you can find me in Castle Malt High Monday to Friday from half past eight to one and then um, when I then head down to the youth complex you can find the lovely Lee who takes over at that point. So Lee is in my chair um, and he then takes over the same role but does exactly the same job in the afternoon. Brilliant. Um, what can new pupils expect when coming to Castle High School? 
So Castle Milk High School is um, the school that I went to, so I, I personally think it's a great school um, and I enjoyed every minute of uh, my time at Castle Milk High, but I think it's got even bigger and better and I think what, my favourite thing about Castle Milk High is the amount of support that young people have got on, on tap really, so um, young people have always got access to people to help them with all the things we've just spoke about, but also um, employability staff, they've got teachers that go above and beyond at Castle Milk High, I think. I think like the other schools as well, I don't think it's anything different, but I think there's definitely a community spirit um, at Castle Milk High and young people are welcomed with open arms and I think they enjoy um, the, the time both in the class and the extra extracurricular that's on offer. Excellent. Uh, and just last thing, a wee message for all new and current pupils at Casmark High School from yourself. Well, it's been, a, it's been a bit of a crazy year so far. So normally by this point, we'll have had met all the primary seven pupils and we would have done lots of work with the school leavers. And so we've missed a big, big chunk um, of the support that we would offer uh, young people at Casmark High. But what I would say is that we've missed them lots. Um, it's been quiet. Um, in the corridors, as you can see for the video, it's really quiet. So I'm looking forward to welcoming everybody and, and getting back to the, the new normal, um, whatever that might be at school. Brilliant. Thanks, Kelly. No worries. See you soon, guys. That was Kelly there, um, one of our Homelink workers. Uh, hopefully that gave you enough um, advice and information that you need. And if you do need to ask any more questions, don't be, don't be slow in sending some messages to our social medias or our, or our emails or giving us a phone. We're going to put our contact information up every week um, when we're in the school. So just check out our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, or give us an email for things like that. And also, if anyone who's listening uh, wants to be interviewed, has got as an active role within the community and wants to kind of promote their services, then please contact us and we'll feature you in this. We're happy. We're an open shop. We're happy to feature any, anything that is relevant that's going to give people helpful information. Yep, definitely. Um, so that's education. As much information as we can give right now, I think, Chris. Um, we're learning every day, and as I said, we are putting up information every day on what we're hearing from the government, what we're hearing from the schools. So uh, that is education. That is the education podcast. Um, we've still got a wee bit to go for this week's podcast. And obviously, you weren't here last week. I don't know if you've seen how Tom got on with this section. I did see. I think you were quite harsh, a harsh taskmaster or quizmaster. Oh, you think so? I think I was harsh. Uh, what what uh, question was it? Was, was it? He was. He, he got a score. He got half the score oh, correct. So, yep. and Actually. which I thought was mighty impressive for an American football score. I thought it was getting he's an half of the score. Fan. I know, he he's a geek. Known. He should have known. He really and should have known. <laughs> he didn't even know. John Sim was in Doctor Who, so oh, no, I no. I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought the quiz this week would be quite good to send you back to school, basically, Chris. Oh, because no. we're speaking about education, so I've got eight subjects with a question each. Oh no! Get on with that. So, <laughs> um, if you don't mind me asking, when was it you were last in school? A while ago, or was it recently? Eh. Uh... Wait, as a worker or as a pupil? <laughs> <laughs> Just graduated six years, two years ago. Uh, um, believe it or not, uh, I finished sixth year all the way back in 1997. Really? Yes. Wow. I didn't know that. No, I didn't think it was so, that. Yeah, it was, it was quite a while ago. Okay. Um, so. um, but you've got two kids now. One is a, yeah. one that's at school. Yeah, Katrina is currently, well, she's finished primary three she's going into primary four I mean, uh, and Jack's got another year to go until he goes to into primary one okay so maybe some of this will come to mind but I, I did maybe. Kinda, I did kind of put it towards a secondary school kind of setting so okay we'll see how you get in eight eight subjects eight questions how many do you think you're gonna get oh um I'll, I'll go halfway down the middle and say four I think I think falls doable I really I don't don't. Know, if I can beat uh, Tom's score was four last week, wasn't it? I think he got four, but six he questions. Had, we only had six questions, right? Yeah. We need to work out percentages now. Aye, we'll do oh that. my god. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony can do that for us. Yeah, yeah. Right, so question one is maths. How were you at maths? I wasn't too bad at maths. I um I was always stronger at maths than I was English, so oh. but 
Uh, ironically, I got um, I came out of school with a higher mark in English than I did in maths. <laughs> okay. Go figure. <laughs> So we won't give the percentages to you then? We won't get you... No, no, it's not that. I think it was just I was I was that kind of uh, lackadaisical with maths that I just sat back and went, ah. It's and then easy. I worked really hard at English, so I ended up right. getting the higher mark. So there's a lesson for everyone out there who's still at school. It's not just about ability. It's about the work you put in as well. Right, okay. Maths, question one. What's the long side of a right angle triangle called? The long side. So I think there's the the opposite, the adjacent, and then this one. Is it the tangent? It's not the tangent, no. No. I think it's a, I think it's a Greek word, I think so, or Latin. Hypotenuse, it's called. Oh, the hypotenuse, of course it is, yeah. Question two is English. So you did get a bit of mark in that, so hopefully you get a oh, bit of hopefully we'll see. English. So you have been watching a bit of one of these TV shows, so hopefully you know who created this character. So who created Detective Sherlock Holmes? Was it Arthur Conan Doyle? It was Arthur Conan Doyle. Well done. English wow. book yeah. again. I don't know. So one from two. Next subject, we're moving to the PE department. Now, you didn't, you didn't come on the podcast last week because you were busy, but you thought it would be a great opportunity for us to do sport. Okay. So here's a sport question coming your way since you missed yeah. it. Which country won the World Cup in 2018? But 2018, so we're going back to the last World Cup? Yep. Oh, jeez, oh. <laughs> You're not a football fan, aren't you? No, I, so I, I, I do watch the World Cup, that's the thing. Right. It was France. It was France, well done. I was getting mixed up between France and Germany. Germany were the last World yeah, they one before, because that was the World Cup they get really beaten royally, the Germans, was that right? They beat the Brazilians at their home patch. They beat them 7-1. Oh, God, aye. Yeah. Aye. That was mental. Um, so you've passed... English and PE, you're walking out of school with two grey days in them, but you've got a D in maths. Oh dear. So, next one is music. So, I know you're a music fan. You're okay. So, hopefully, it's an A plus here. Name the four families of an orchestra uh, Woodwind, Brass, yep. Yep. Strings, yep. and Percussion. Yep. There we go. Music A plus, A band one. Question five is drama. Okay. So if, you, oh. if you took drama. I didn't know. I, I was interested in drama quite early on and then I lost interest. I get more into music. So. Okay. So this question is, which Shakespeare play is mainly set in Scotland? Macbeth. Macbeth is correct. There we go. We're passing drama and everything. You lost interest in it in seconds. I liked a wee bit of Shakespeare, I have to say. Right. Okay. A wee bit of no, shaky, but... shaky. <laughs> <laughs> Shaky Stevens. Shaky Stevens. Shaky, <laughs> Shakespeare, Shaky Stevens. <laughs> Shaking back. <laughs> you try that with a music group one, one week. Shaking yep. Stevens version of Shakespeare. Yep. Um, question six is art. So we're up at the art department. Oh, I'm going to be rubbish at this. Who painted the screen? Have you guys like this on a boat? Yeah, no, I know the one you're talking about. Uh, Oh, God, who was it again? Was it the guy that walked his ear off? It wasn't him, no. No, all right, okay, I'm done. Michelangelo? <laughs> it was uh, Edward Munch. Oh, no, wouldn't have got it. You're getting it. Oh, well, I, I failed art, but you don't really I was confident I would fail art. I was very confident. Right, okay. Uh, the next one is computing, so we're up at the computers. Okay. How are you maybe. computing? Mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll I think see. you're pretty good with computers now, though, aren't you? No, I was. I did. All, I did computing in school, but back in those days, uh, there was a. We they were pretty antiquated by today's standards. Wind so. them up or something. Yeah, that was uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Avoid the dinosaurs outside to <laughs> to get the wind up thing for it. Yeah. 
Uh, so the, your computing question is, what does RAM stand for? RAM. Random access memory. There we go, easy. You walked into that exam and just went, you know what, there's the answers. Give me my A right now. And the last question is science. Okay. Science a strong subject for you at school? It, it was, yes. Yeah. I think we've spoken about it a couple of times up at school. Mm. Some We've been helping some young people in the reflection. That's true, yeah. That's true. And science has came up and we've, we've both been not bad at it. So I think you'll get this quite easily. Who discovered penicillin? Marie Curie. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was... Right, we'll was, give you a second chance. We'll it was bloody you. Fleming, wasn't it? It was Fleming, aye. Uh, give me a half for that, I think. That's, Curie, that's science in six years, so you did, that's what you've done there. Marie Curie was radioactivity. Aye. So it was. So you, failed, you failed science at first, but you came back and resat it and got the pass that you needed. I, did, I, I got a good prelim result, so I got <laughs> an appeal. So you got English, PE, music, drama, computing, and science on the second try. Mm -hmm. So... Six, six out of eight. That's decent. That's I'm, a good I'm score. happy with that. I'm, I'm I, extremely I would be happy. happy with that. Definitely. Um, I'm gutted that I got the science wrong at first. I just grabbed the first thing that came into my mind. And I, well, I, I'll try the quiz with Brooke before I bring it on just to see if it's an all right standard. Like if, if she goes like that, oh, that's too easy what you're doing, or oh, that's too hard, don't, don't give them that. Um, and she she said Marie Curie at first as well. So it must be something. I don't know that what it is, yeah. Curie. It's just like because uh, she was, I, yeah, she was. And I said, no, not Marie Curie. And she done the same as you. She went, oh, no, it's Fleming, of course. <laughs> I. Um, so I hopefully we've got a guest on next time so that we can see if you're still the champion because basically you're still champion now. Yeah, I'm, I need, I'm still waiting on my championship belt getting delivered. Uh, ah, it's on the way, I'm sure. It's on the way, right, good, good, good. <laughs> uh, so that's us done for the week. Um, that is our podcast on education and all things that come with the Milk Crown podcast. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, check out our other podcasts that are on our YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. Like the videos, subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Um, and you can join us on our social medias uh, at Facebook, Kelly Youth Complex Staff, Twitter, Youth Complex CYC, Instagram, Youth under slash Complex, TikTok, Kelly Youth Complex, and you can also email us at cycyouthteam at gmail.com. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to say cheerio and see you next week. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>